Gallnet News Digest Review of the Year 3306. We recall the news so you don't have to. Part 5. The Way Ahead. Commanders have known for some time that the Pilots' Federation has something big in the works. Some huge change to the way the galaxy works. A change to what their members will be allowed to do. During 3306, we finally got some idea about what this new thing would be. In fact, we got quite a lot of new information. But equally, a huge amount of information is still missing. So, what is this new development? And what don't we know about it? The Horizons permit was issued to all commanders in preparation for this big new thing, even if they hadn't paid for it. You can tell who already had the permit because they have a load of pale blue spaceships. You really can't complain about this act of generosity because the Pilots' Federation then organised free memberships, including the Horizon Permit, for anyone who wanted it, in their significantly epic membership drive in November, making completely free the new normal. The first thing we learned back in May was that New Era, as it was called back then, wasn't going to happen in 3306. Instead, and largely due to the Pilots' Federation planet going into outbreak, The release would be pushed back to early 3307. Learning the lesson of squadron carriers, which were released as fleet carriers 30 months after they were announced, it would be prudent to assume that early 3307 might become mid-3307 before the big red button is pushed on New Era. And then, on the 3rd of June, they came out and said it. New Era wasn't New Era at all. New Era was Odyssey, and Odyssey meant commanders finally getting permission to land on planets with atmospheres, and getting permission to get out of their chairs and walk around on planetary surfaces, in planetary bases, in outposts, and in starports. To seek out new life and new civilizations, as well as interesting new species of herbs and other non-sentient life. To boldly enter settlements where no one has gone before. There are Of course, some pretty big caveats. We'll be allowed to land on planets with atmosphere, but not too much atmosphere. Water worlds, ammonia worlds and earth-like worlds will be off limits. As gravity doubles, so does the amount of effort required to stand up and walk. We won't be walking around on any 10G worlds. We literally won't have the ability to stand up in such a high gravity. And without a pressure suit, we'd end up unconscious with all our blood slumped into our legs. But... For those planets we are allowed to set foot on, the first person to step out on them will be recorded forever. And this doesn't just mean planets with atmospheres, of course. We'll be able to get out and explore planetary bases we've already driven round. We'll be able to land on Mitterrand Hollow, approach a nicotine penal colony on foot and quite possibly get killed by skimmers. Starports spin on their hub, which means centrifugal gravity. Although the social hubs are so near the rotational hub of the station, that the perceived centrifugal force is likely to be minimal. So, using a sippy cup in the bar is strongly advised. In outpost, which do not spin, commanders will be provided with magnetic boots at the airlock by a team of space butlers. It will be considered bad manners to attempt to walk on the walls. There will be social hubs in starports, in outposts and in planetary bases where we can buy and upgrade equipment, presumably trade black market goods and take commissions. Missions will often involve going to places called settlements, where the inhabitants are likely to get fairly fed up of the steady tramp of adventurers' footsteps, coming to steal the quest object or deactivate the power core or kill the mission target. It's not going to be a happy life, living in a settlement. Incidentally, according to information from the Pilots' Federation, the social hubs in starports will be called spaceports, and the starports will be renamed star bases. That means Coriolis, Orbis and Acellus stations. Outposts will still be called outposts. There will be all sorts of guns, from laser to plasma to kinetic, and there will be different and very stylish away team excursion suits to wear. From the exploration suit with a handy pouch for the Dyson scanner, designed for the budding botanist, to the scavenger suit designed for people who like to pick locks and find things, to the robocop suit for people who like to kill people. Suits have shields, but unlike the shields on ships and SRVs, these shields will be off by default because they drain the battery pretty quickly. You also have a little jetpack to help you escape when you fall down a hole and perform party tricks like leaping a tall building in a single bound, gravity permitting. 
There will be grenades, one for dropping shields, one for penetrating armour, and one for raising a temporary protective shield. You presumably use that one on yourself, uh, not on your enemy. For the first time, a team of commanders working together in, in, in what, a wing, physical multi-crew, will be able to work together on foot in service vehicles and in ships all at the same time, will be able to ferry each other about. There isn't space Uber nearby. Many people make the mistake of talking about different sorts of SRV. The SRV, or Surface Reconnaissance Vehicle, or buggy, as Lord Braben likes to call it, is one very small part of ground-based transport. We haven't been told what other surface vehicles there will be, but it's likely there will be trucks, armoured and possibly tracked vehicles, perhaps personal transport that is even smaller and lighter than the SRV. And if there are new surface vehicles, of course there will be new spaceships. How can there not be new spaceships? They may not include the fabled Panther Clipper, but by the same token, they may include the fabled Panther Clipper. They may include the Planetary Shuttle, who doesn't miss that singularly useless little transport? Whatever they are, there will be ships that have a use within the new environment. It'll be possible for a whole new breed of commander to live and work their entire career in a single system, with all the missions they undertake local, possibly on the same planet. Owning a spaceship will suddenly become optional. But can you own an SRV if you don't have a spaceship? And of course, many existing commanders will choose to remain in their spaceships and may never meet the new land-based commanders. For most, it's likely to be somewhere in between, sometimes flying a spaceship, sometimes walking around. Variety is the spice of space life, after all. If we can explore Guardian sites on foot, will we find new information about the Guardians we couldn't see from our SRVs? If we get out and walk around the abandoned Inra bases, Will they be even more spooky than they are in the drive through version? If we visit the mysterious Thargoid bases in and around the Pleiades, will we meet Thargoids? Will they be friendly? Once we've met the Thargoids, how will the sad occasion of our untimely death be handled? Will those miracle cure Vitadine nanomeds be all they're made out to be, restoring us to full health from the raspberry jam-like smear that was all the search and rescue party found as our mortal remains? With the new drone-based vanity camera, we'll be able to take pictures of ourselves experiencing the sunset as we stand on a newly discovered alien world. We can call the phenomenon asses in front of things. And so, as we imagine ourselves staring out into the imaginary sunset of an imaginary newly discovered planet in an imaginary galaxy of the future that may or may not materialise during 3307, with a camera droid buzzing behind us, taking pictures that make an unflattering comparison between the size of our buttocks and the setting sun, we say a sad farewell to 3306, a year that ended a lot better than it began. And welcome in 3307, a year full of hope for the future. And that concludes our Galnet News Roundup for 3306. We'll be back very soon with the latest news from 3307.